Welcome to Dayton Superior Learning Center. This session, we will discuss the use and application of coil and ferro inserts. Thank you for your time. This presentation is intended for training purposes only. For technical specifications of or the products mentioned in this training, refer to DaytonSuperior.com. Today, we're going to talk about coil and ferrule inserts. Coil and ferrule inserts is the difference between a national course thread and a standard coil thread. National course thread typically has a, a UNC uh, pitch to it. Typically, it is a one or one through eight on the pitch. And coil thread typically has two and a half threads per inch. Coil inserts typically are used for lifting. Uh, it's old technology as far as lifting is concerned. Uh, some of the advantages for it is it has a small opening to patch. It does have a four to one safety factor. Uh, typically there is no national standard for the coil thread. So every company has its own unique quirks about their, their thread when they thread coil rod. Uh, problem you have with that is you may have a, if a manufacturer of a coil insert may not match up to the thread coil thread product from a secondary customer. So uh, you have to worry about mix and match uh, uh, compatibility within the product line. Disadvantages, coil thread capacity, you are limited severely by the capacity of the coil thread. Uh, no ground release. So anytime you have anything up high or around a corner or anything like that, you are going to have to uh, either climb a ladder to release it uh, while it is still erected, being erected. Uh, capacity is often very on type of lifting plate. Uh, so you could have a very strong insert in place here, but your lifting plate could actually reduce that capacity. So now you're being limited by the accessory components within the system. Uh, reduced values in shear. Uh, coil products are not very good in shear. Uh, we have a huge reduction in shear capacities. Uh, difficult time to set forms. Uh, it's, a lot of times it's very difficult to work in setting the forms. Uh, setting both, then you have to have an insert plug, uh, et cetera. So it's very time consuming and monotonous. Uh, you have to also make sure you have a minimum bolt penetration within the insert. Otherwise you run the risk of pigtailing, uh, which is basically the unraveling of the actual coil itself. Ferrule inserts, typically used for permanent connections only. It's not designed for lifting products, uh, primarily because of the NC threaded bolts and have such a low shear tolerance within the bolt itself because you have so many, so many threads that the threads are fairly thin and you don't have a whole lot of um, capacity within those threads for lifting. Typical for safety factor is three to one for the coils. Uh, as you can see, we have roughly 15 different style inserts within the coil uh, family. Uh, the coil inserts typically require you to you reuse a coil bolt to uh, anchor them or to set them in place. Uh, you can use coil rod and a coil rod to accommodate that also. Uh, lifting end of it, you can have lifting eyes, uh, lifting plates, uh, 
uh, swivel lift plates, et cetera. So there's a multitude of different lifting systems that you can actually use. Uh, I believe there are eight different types of lifters here on the page that actually can be used in lifting coil. System capacity obviously depends on the individual component pieces. So everything you put together as a package, you have to take the weakest link out of all of those and that's what the system that insert will actually lift. So if your coil bolt is the lift is the weakest link, that is the, that is the capacity of everything you're lifting. Ferro inserts, typically you see them with used with NC threads for use such as uh, pipe hangers, uh, et cetera, for uh, permanent anchors in a wall for ledge, ledger brackets, et cetera. Uh, they are very good at that type because they can be tightened down. And once they are tightened down with an NC thread, it's very, usually very difficult to get that to vibrate loose. Where do you use coil? Where do you use these inserts? Well, structural products typically have a tendency to use quite a few ferrule inserts in place here. Uh, you would see them actually for areas that are going to be threaded into them, such as threaded rebar, uh, et cetera, that would have the national course thread on it. A lot of parking structures would have NC threaded products in. Uh, primarily for signage, uh, for anchorage of uh, different uh, apparatus within the within the parking structure, et cetera. So, the advantages of the coil thread product: uh, basically, it's tested, it's proven safety factor. Uh, it meets all of the OSHA requirements I'll put forth by OSHA. Uh, it's recognized by the industry and usually it's mostly rectors are very familiar with this system. Disadvantages, coil thread capacity, no thread standards on the thread. So you don't know if you're going to get a good matchup between the insert and then the threaded product. Uh, setting bolts or insert plugs are going to be required to actually set the product in place before you pour the concrete. Uh, minimum bolt penetration and loads on the various inserts, uh, varies with types of lifting plates being used, whether or not it be a swivel lift plate, uh, dual swivel lift plate, uh, lifting eye, et cetera. Uh, all of those actually play a, a crucial role in how you, how much, what the capacity is for the insert lifting system. Different types of coils within the marketplace. We typically run a seven coil turn, seven turn coil. Uh, typically, what you're looking at is everything from half inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, and inch and a half in diameter. Our standard sizes. Ferrule diameters, typically we have quarter, three eighths, half, three quarter, seven eighths, one inch, inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. Uh, based on the size of the ferrule, uh, we'll tell you how many actual wire struts you can actually have welded to it. So some anchors cannot be manufactured, let's say with a three quarter, three eighths or quarter inch uh, ferrule because there's not enough meat within the ferrule to accept the weld. So when we talk about tension and shear, tension is when we're actually pulling the bolt uh, in an upward motion, straight up. And shear is when you're looking at coming from the side of it to take the top of it off. It's just gonna shear that top right off. Coil bolts, typically what we look at here, half inch and three quarter. Uh, you're talking 1,650 pounds to half inch in tension. 
for the shorter lengths, for the longer lengths, you get up to about 2,700 pounds, uh, but only 1,800 in shear. Typically, you, vote, you are always looking at about a minimum of 30% reduction in uh, shear from what a tension load will be for that same coil product. Dayton Superior, we recommend that if you are a precaster, going to, going to be using these products on a regular basis, uh, that you actually bump your size up by one uh, diameter, uh, primarily just uh, to increase the safety factor because of uh, uh, fatigue, et cetera, within this product line. Some of the things you have to be concerned with with coil length is bay coil bolt length is basically making sure you have enough to go through your formwork, through your step back from the safe surface of the concrete, and then the minimum coil penetration that's going to be required from the edge of the coil insert to the bow where you're going to bottom out your coil bolt. Now you always want to remember you have have want to run through a coil a minimum of one diameter coil thread. So basically, if you're talking a half inch, you wanna make sure that since you have six, six threads per inch, you wanna make sure you run through at least three threads past the end of the coil. So you wanna make sure you penetrate in and through that coil by a minimum of three coil threads. We talked about pigtailing. Uh, a lot of times what will happen is if you do not use a long enough coil bolt to go all the way through the insert, you run the risk of pigtailing, which is basically tearing the welds off of the coil and actually unraveling the coil itself. Determine the length of the coil, coil, the coil bolt. Uh, you want to make sure you have the, the formwork grip, which is basically what you're looking at, the insert setback, the minimum coil penetration, the minimum void space that you need on the end of the bolt, on the other side of the coil insert, plus the, and that'll give you the overall bolt length. Uh, the one thing you also want to make sure of in your grip, you want to make sure you consider all of your form work and everything else that you have to achieve or use for to achieve that uh, concrete pad. Now we can also do form ties out of coil uh, products. Uh, coil ties are often used as lifting devices because of their uh, availability from the industry. Uh, so typically you see that a B1 has two struts, a B2 has four struts. Uh, by adding additional struts, we can actually increase the overall working load of the product. And you can typically get them in six inch all the way up through to 24 inch, 36 inch, et cetera. But some of the standard sizes that you see for lifting inserts here typically are going to be six inch, eight inch, and up to 12 inches in overall length. Some of the more common straight loop coil insert, typically half inch by three, half inch by uh, four, half inch by six inch. Typically you see these quite often used in a variety of different four concrete forming projects. Uh, the loop insert is very good because you can wrap throw it over the top of a piece of rebar uh, and actually thread, then basically thread your formwork to that insert. Uh, and use the rebar as your anchoring system.
you have a double flare coil loop or an, uh, uh, double flare coil loop insert. Uh, basically, this is two two individual loops loaded to a coil coil in, coil insert. Uh, you know, you're going to get about thirteen thousand uh, five hundred pound safe working load and tension with this. And about uh, in shear, you're going to get also a very good shear with this product. <clears throat> a single flared loop insert, very similar to the uh, double flared, uh, except this one just has one wire running off of it. You're going to get about a 7,600 pound safe working load capability in 12 inches of concrete. We have our double flared coil loop insert, often referred to as an egg beater. Uh, typically, you see these in larger diameters, one inch, inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. Uh, usually made with a little bit heavier wire, 375 and 444 wire. Uh, the 444 wire just is the same coil diameter that is being used for coil thread. So you are going to achieve about a 13,000, a little over 13,000 pound safe working load. Thin slab ferrule inserts uh, typically can be designed for in, in, uh, insert depth of three inches. Typically you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of three and three quarter inch thick to four inch thick slabs uh, that can be used with this thin slab coil insert. One of the more common inserts being used there is the expanded coil insert, uh, the F56 uh, product. Uh, this product here actually uh, has been used uh, regularly in the construction market for concrete anchors for everything from uh, form attachment to uh, jump systems to uh, any other type of anchorage within the concrete where you're going to have to have a hefty, strong anchor in place in the concrete. Uh, you are talking somewhere around the neighborhood of uh, about a 10,600-pound uh, at inch and a quarter diameter, and you're talking three-quarter inch or about 4,200 pounds. Coil rods. Typically, we have two different varieties. We have a B13, uh, which is a standard coil nut. We also have a B25, which is the equivalent to two B13s. So two, two B13s equals a B25, which is a heavy duty coil nut. Uh, typically, you do get a uh, stronger capacity with the uh, coil nut. Uh, being, you know, being that uh, the 25 is uh, a lot of times required to achieve maximum load capacity of the coil rod, you'll have to go to a B25 coil nut. Lift plate, uh, T12 and T26, both of these products here. Uh, Bay one is the T12 is a single directional unit. Typically the, the bale will flip 180 degrees back and forth. Uh, the T26 will typically rotate 360 degrees. It has a bushing on the uh, base here that enables that to swivel in and around. Uh, you always wanna make sure when you're using the T12 that you actually uh, set the bale in the direction that the lift is going to come from. Edge lift plates are available also for different type of uh, lifting requirements. For this, you usually would recommend a T2 uh, lift inserts, a tandem lift inserts. Uh, you see these being used quite often in tilt-up uh, rolls and in production. Uh, a lot of times in and around strongbacks, et cetera, uh, they will use these products along with the T27 edge lift plate. 
loading conditions. Loading conditions typically uh, take place uh, in a vertical position, which is 100% tension. Uh, we do take load ratings at a uh, R dimension, which is in total tension. Then we have shear dimension, which is in H. And then we have the T dimension, uh, which is typically uh, a 30 degree or 40 degree uh, angle, uh, the product being put in a true lifting condition with shear and tension loads. We also have a wire and rope insert. Uh, these are typically used in and around by precasters when you are going to have product that is going to have to be lifted from the edge. A lot of times they will use this to try to salvage the edge so that they don't get as much breakage or from cracking and spalling on the edge of the component. It does offer a little bit of flexibility in and around the lifting process. One thing you have to make sure is that you do get 100% full engagement in the coil thread product insert uh, before you try lifting with this system. <clears throat> Typically, it is used for use in tension loads only. Uh, we also have the F49, F49I bolts. Uh, both, all three of these products here typically uh, use a coil threaded insert or threaded uh, bolt of some sort to anchor it into an insert cast in place. Uh, you are talking for like the F49, F49A. Uh, you do have some uh, sizable uh, capacities that can be used with it. On the uh, cast component, uh, you are looking at uh, some limitations as this product here uh, is not being recommended at all for shear loading. Feral inserts. Well, if we didn't get it across yet, you don't want to lift the product with a coil with a ferrule insert. A ferrule insert, because of the thread capacities of a NC threaded bolt, you do not want to pick up a piece of concrete with that insert. So these inserts are predominantly made for permanent anchorage, signs, uh, uh, shelf brackets, et cetera, those types of things. Uh, these inserts are extremely uh, easy to use. Uh, they come with a variety of different uh, characteristics. You can get them uh, you can get them a straight through ferrule insert. Most of the inserts have cupped bases on them so concrete can't seep in. Uh, when you pour them in place here, it's recommended that they be set initially with a setting plug. Uh, but all of the inserts typically will have a name of the manufacturer on the side of it. They will also label what type of steel they're made out of. Uh, typically because with, with the barrels, you can actually get them in a bunch of different varieties of stainless steel. You have standard, uh, standard carbon steel material, uh, and you can get them epoxy coated or galvanized also. Some of the in in products that are actually used for, for setting these plugs. Here we have a setting plug here, which is actually just a, uh, a thread threaded component with a, that runs a nail to go through it to your plywood forms. Uh, we also have plastic plugs that will actually attach to your steel or plastic or wood forms. Uh, then the coil insert will thread right in on top of that. Uh, probably the most common threading method that there is. Uh, other threading methods are to actually insert the coil bolt or to, NC threaded bolt through your formwork and everything, and then have this insert uh, threaded onto the end of that coil bolt. 
or on, on the NC threaded bolt. Uh, we also have some forged uh, cast things that can be used for, uh, for anchorage. Uh, some of the most more common ones are uh, the rocket colon insert for use for uh, pipe uh, hangers and, and parking structures. We also have our RTSAE, which is the rail track insert, which typically takes a 7 8 inch uh, 8 UN thread. Uh, that that insert here has been uh, very popular on a lot of the subway systems here and across the country, uh, but it is typically designed for high strength application, uh, used uh, usually with an epoxy coating, et cetera, on top of it, uh, and embedded in an epoxy, a uh, bed of epoxy. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or email me at training at DaytonSuperior.com or you can contact me directly at Chuck Oak at DaytonSuperior.com. Have a great day. Thank you.